G'day, welcome to this episode. Um, I'm going to take a break from the doors because that was uh, just painful to do one. So while I'm uh, recovering mentally from that other door, I'm going to uh, chuck in this um, this floor pan on the passenger side. So um, yeah, let's get into it. All right, so as um, part of the panel repairs uh, on this ute, um, as I mentioned, the floor pan has been damaged by that plenum. Um, the plenum chamber being rotted out, so water gets down, as I mentioned, from through the cowl panel, where it joins the windscreen into the plenum chamber. The drain plug locks up over time, rusts. Um, the water builds up, it rusts, and then eventually it'll eat through that plenum chamber and you'll It'll just be pissing water when you know so you'll get a heavy downfall, downpour. Um, water will come down to the driver's side. So yeah, what as a result of that not being um, as as a result of that not being uh, looked into, you get rust on the floor and uh, it'll leak through if not um, left check under the carpet. So I've got some uh, some rust eating straight through on the passenger side. So instead of getting a full floor pan because the driver's side's all right, I've just got this section. Um, and this is once again it's a rare spares uh, panel you know i ordered it through um resto country uh floor pan hq to wb um and the code is rp105 uh and it's a left hand so um yeah i will uh i'll start showing you exactly what the damage is and then we'll go through how the installation goes all right so here's underneath the uh the ute uh, on the passenger side, so you can see the floor pan and where the damage is uh, located. Um, so there's some obvious um, breakthrough marks here. Uh, all the rust has come through, but for some reason it's sort of poked its head through without um, being totally rusted out. So I'd assume that might be stone chips or something, and then that's sort of where the the rust has um, entered through um, and then where the stones haven't hit and the paint's retained from factory, it's, uh, it's remained all right. So, um, yeah, you can see there's some pinholes. I'm going to have to sort of get a screwdriver and smash it down and see where the weak spots are. But from what I can see, it's sort of random. It goes back to about here. You can see from that whole floor pan area to there. I might be thinking of, you know, maybe cutting it back to about there. Um, and then down, there's a couple of random holes here, which I'm not too sure um, what they're there for. Unless it, I think they might've just been punched through or whether they're drainage holes, I'm not too sure. I'll have to uh, figure that one out, but they don't look like they're, um, actually, they look like if someone's just done that later on. So this hole here is uh, obviously an access hole or a drainage hole. Um, which has got a cover on it. Um, and that cover is quite rusted, so I'll need to get a new one, which you can actually buy. I've seen you can buy those. Um, on the panel, that is not included. So you'll have to cut that out as well. Um, so that's not a huge deal. Um, and obviously the two screw holes as well, here and there. Um, another hole there, once again, not too sure what that is. Um, it's not a mount mounting bracket or anything like that, so I'd imagine it may be just a drain plug hole. Another hole there, probably drainage again. Um, so this is not going to be a super hard fix. You can actually see some rust holes straight through down there, so I might have to go further down than I thought. Anyway, so that's the, um, that's the issue that I'm looking at. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just get the wire wheel out and um, just knock some of this paint off, see exactly where the rust extends to, and then I can make a, determine exactly where I need to cut. As per usual, it's never as easy as it seems. So you can see that's like a piece of Swiss cheese there. It's uh, shocking. Um, yeah, the, so it's, they're the actual um, push throughs of the rust, um, but the rest is quite heavily pitted, which is fine. And I don't mind replacing the whole lot. Um, but it's not as easy as it seems. So we're sort of going up there. We're, we're getting pretty pretty pitted there. A few punched holes there. Um, and it all seems pretty normal until you get 
around to the back. And uh, so I've just taken a bit off, a bit of paint off here. Um, so there are the, uh, the Swiss cheese marks, and then it sort of goes up high, but unfortunately you've got this secondary structural um, panel um, over that floor pan, and then also you've got one here as well. So the floor pan actually extends over, to hit, over this, um, and down here is not too bad, so I can sort of go as high as I want there, but it's more the front section here and around to here. Um, these, this pitting sort of extends over the back of this here. So, you know, I don't want to unpick this here and then remove it all and then put the other bit on. I mean, you probably could, but it's really, really hard with this rotisserie arm now to get access to cutting this off. So in a perfect world, um, you would remove this, um, unpick the spot welds and then cut right off and then, and then replace that whole thing on top of that. But uh, I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to cut as close as I can to here. I reckon I've got most of the metal. And then that way, at least all those uh, really bad spots are covered. And then once I KBS the rest of the uh, weaker steel, which has still got relatively big pits in it, um, they're above that structural bit anyway. And as long as I contain that rust, it's not going to be um, any issues going forward because if it does, does go through, it's just got this section underneath it anyway. So that's the way I'm going to push forward with it. Um, so now I'm just going to find out exactly how far I can go up before hitting these, these panel bits, these secondary structural panels here and there. And then I'll just shape and cut the panel um, to suit and then lay it back over inside the cabin like that and find out exactly where I need to cut it as close to that area as possible and around here and then to here as well it's literally just before these lips here It'd be nice to have a flat section so I don't have to try and marry them up but I don't think I can I don't think it's possible at this stage so yeah I'll do that now cut it and then once I've got my final template and I'm happy with it I'll uh, trace around it and cut it out. So here we go. So uh, I've trimmed the panel to as close as I can get to those air reinforced areas that I spoke about earlier. Um, and so I've uh, filed off the edges and uh, laid it in position and then just traced around it. So I've got my final template. Um, I'm pretty happy with that. There might be shaving it pretty close here. There's one little pinhole. Yeah, hey, mate. You going down there, Jim? Um, there's one little pinhole just outside of that line there, but uh, you know, I think that's fine. Um, I'll just plug mold it. Um, yeah, so now I'm going to uh, cut that out and uh, try and fit it in. That's cut out. Um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. Just got to uh, test fit it now, but uh, being a large piece and, and having it in such a uh, position, it's hard to, uh, to get the magnets. The magnets aren't strong enough to hold it. So I'm gonna have to fashion up some kind of bracketing system underneath with a screw. So I'll just get a little bit of sheet metal, put one there, one there, maybe one there and one there. Um, and that will allow me to have a brace system and then I can just lay that on top and um, 
start to sort of fashion it in and get it fitted while it's resting on top of those braces. And then that will allow me to <coughs> use the panel clips to, uh, to secure it in and get it a good fit before I start welding. So um, yeah, I'll get it stuck into those and we'll uh, get it laid on top. Okay, very crude, but uh, hopefully effective. Got those little brackets there uh, that'll hold the panel into place, and then I'll start to uh, test fit it and grind accordingly, and fit it in, and uh, and then get the panel clips uh, adjusted, and yeah, then weld it in. So I've got that uh, crudely fit um, with the panel clips and uh, I'm not very happy with it. So um, yeah, I said you gotta show the uh, show the good but you also gotta show the bad and uh, this one's a bad one. So um, as you can see, it's a monstrous gap. So I don't know what happened when I, uh, when I cut it. It looked pretty good. Over here it's just shocking. So um, I'm gonna have to, and what I'll do is I'll I've also missed a little bit here. There's a few pinholes. So what I might do is actually just create another patch here just to get a bit more of that uh, that rust. It's not uh, not ideal, um, but the rest of it I should be able to, to bridge. It's not bad along here. Um, once again, you know, you're never going to see it, um, but it needs to be structural. So you don't want to, you know. Have your welds too uh, too far apart and bridged, so you want them to be nice and solid and uh, stable. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to uh, start to tack this in, this uh, this thing in, and then um, start lining it up. And um, yeah, hopefully, most of it will be pretty seamless. And then I'll just make a little patch at the end for, to fix up that shit bit. Floor pans in. Yeah, pretty happy with it. It's pretty uh, pretty rough compared to the other panels, but once again, it's not going to be seen. It's just got to be structural. So, you know, I took it as far as I could take it as uh, in the rustic areas, and I got into a little bit of strife here where I was sort of chasing holes left, right, and centre. Um, as I mentioned, that brace got running behind here makes it really hard to uh, 
to put that whole section in without you know unpicking all those spot wells behind it and taking it all out. So although that's not ideal, um, I managed to recover all those holes and basically make it some big puddles and fill it all in. Um, so it's strong as now. Um, I know it's probably not the best way to do it, but uh, you know, that's, that's the way I did it. Um, I did hear, uh, it was on another channel, uh, it was a guy talking about putting floor pans in and uh, he said that you need a certain requirement for roadworthy as far as overlapping them uh, for structural stability and things like that. But uh, I haven't done that. And um, look, this is stronger than what the, the, car, the floor before it was, as you can see. Yeah, you know, <clears throat> looks like it's been shot with a shotgun. You know, it's just Swiss cheese. So it's infinitely stronger than that. Um, so that's the panel and that's the new one. So yeah, happy with that. That's uh, as much as I'm gonna do on this floor. Um, the other side's good, and so I'm leaving it. Uh, I haven't cut the hole out. As you can see, the uh, access hole, or access cap there. Um, I'm yet to, uh, to drill the hole out for that. And uh, that's quite important, obviously, for drainage. So, you know, you can get these caps off, uh, off Kingswood Country Rare Spares, provide them, or I can just refurbish that old one, but it's a uh, pretty cactus from memory. There's no point trying to fix that. You might as well just get a new one. It's so pitted uh, and it looks like shit. So I don't think they're that expensive. Um, so yeah, I'll get a new one of those. And yeah, that's it. That's the floor pan done. I'll just quickly show you Yeah, that's the underneath section. So I might go through, because you don't often get another chance to, uh, to visit it from the back, I might go through. I've got to <coughs> knock these back here. And they're the ones that are just welded. Um, but yeah, I might go through and actually just the areas that I think could be reinforced, I'll, uh, I'll go through it and, and uh, add some welds in the back end of it. And that will be it. Um, so yeah, that's the floor pan done. And I just want to give you an update uh, on a couple other things in the, uh, in the workshop at the moment. So an update on the, uh, the other panels that I've actually got from that last order. Uh, one of the first ones, one of the major ones that I wanted to do is the rear wall of the, uh, the ute tray. So um, you may be aware that you can actually get this whole panel replaced. And I was umming and ahhing about doing this or, uh, or just trying to bash out the original, but as you can see, the original is just too far gone. It's, uh, there's too many small um, bump marks and uh, the whole area has been caved in from heavy loads and things like that. So, you know, this part, I think this is about $220, so it's not exactly cheap, but, uh, you know, it saves you a lot of time. So from what I can tell, it creates that new lip for you um, and the rear, which has that rear windscreen there, and then the tarp join um, rivet points will be along this ridge here so you have to do a little bit of work to get it back in but um, yeah it's all new sheet metal and obviously to to, uh, to weld it in you have to um, um, like the spot well the spot welds and uh, put it in so yeah this is a rare spares panel again um, from what I can tell I have heard varying reports about how they fit so I don't know if it's going to be like the uh, the cow panel and, and sort of fit straight on because that cowl panel was an original pressed panel. Um, I think this has sort of just gone off drawing. So from what I can tell, you know, it could be, it could be hard to fit or it could be easy. So I guess we'll find out. But anyway, that's the, uh, the rear wall of the tray. Um, just wanted to show you that. And the next is the actual cowl panel. So I'll come over and show you that on the U. All right, so here we are. Here's the, uh, the cowl panel here. That's just literally sitting on top of the, the, the chamber work that I've done. And without much work at all, it's pretty much just sat 95% of where the original one was. Um, so clearly that shows me that, you know, it's moulded from an original um, mould and, uh, and just pressed straight out of there. So i um, very happy with it and uh, it's not going to require too much work to get uh, to fit around the windscreen areas. I know these little sections here and the fabrications along here that I did uh, were my main concerns. and. Uh, it's sitting a little bit high, but I've isolated um, up here. It seems to be hitting a bit, so it's just a matter of pushing down that chamber 
the plenum chamber where I fabricated. I think it's just sitting a bit high, and that's why that's sitting a bit, bit high there. Um, and you know, that's this metalwork. So you just uh, will have to get the hammer and dolly out, and I reckon we good hours work, and that thing will be uh, buttoned up nicely. Um, and then it'll just be a matter of figuring out the best method to uh, to plug weld that onto the actual unit itself under the chamber itself. Um, Obviously, I'm going to put the doors on and the front guards with the radiator shroud just to make sure that everything's square and to make sure that these little sections here match up the, uh, the guards as well. So um, it's very important that you get that guard line with the door line um, because it's pretty much the focal point of the whole car. And if you get it wrong, it's going to stand out like the old uh, proverbial dog's bollocks. So, um, yeah, we'll get that sorted. And um, that's obviously coming down in the, in the, uh, the final series of the, the plenum chamber videos um, and the cow panel video. So yeah, just wanted to give you an update on those two panels and um, that's pretty much it. So uh, yeah, as per usual, uh, if you like this episode, give us a uh, good old thumbs up. And if you haven't uh, subscribed to the channel yet, uh, please subscribe and, um, and have a look at the whole series uh, from start to finish. All right, see you next time.